Hello everyone, welcome back to the second section about this video series we are doing about how to create automatically technical drawings through Grasshopper and through the Squid Shape Diver Edition plugin in Grasshopper. In the last video, we show what the model is capable of. In today's video, we will focus on the creation of the template in which we will be placing our drawings. That includes the margins, the text boxes, and how to automatically switch between one template and the other. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and to like this video if you haven't done so, as that helps us with um, the algorithm of YouTube. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to explain is what are printing points. Printing points is a standardized um, unit of measurement used in the graphic design industry to be able to measure graphics and um, text. This was created because before that, well, some designers will be using inches, other designers will be using millimeters, and everyone needed a standard unit of measurement to be able to work together. That's why even when we are talking about the creation of PDFs, we need to consider the printing point unit to be able to position our drawings, to uh, give the size to our text, to give the margin to our page, etc. For example, when you said um, in Google Docs or in Microsoft Word that you have a text of size 12, that 12 is actually measured in printing points. So it's not 12 millimeters, it's not 12 inches, 12 printing points. The same happens when you look at an A4 page. An A4 page has 209.9 by 297.03 millimeters of size. But if we look at that in printing points, is exactly 595 printing points and 842 printing points. That means that when we are creating our template, we need to create it in the printing points unit system. So right now we are here in a Rhino document and uh, if we check these rectangles, these are just simple curves, if we check the size of them, as I mentioned, we have 442 units don't uh, focus on these millimeters because we want to focus is in the amount of units that we have. So in this case, 442, eh, sorry, 842. And on the other, we have 595 exactly, which is the amount of printing points that an A4 page has. Here we have a layer system in which we have to begin with uh, the main size of our uh, page. So in this case, we have A4 or we have also A3. Um, let me hide this one so you can see this is all A3 and this is all A4. Inside A4 we have landscape or portrait mode. These are just um, sub layers that we are creating inside A4. So if we check, this is landscape mode and uh, portrait mode. The same happens in the A3 layer. We have also landscape mode and portrait mode. Now. Inside each of these layers, we have also sub layers. So if we focus on the landscape mode, we have, for example, sketch scale. So if I check, um, so if I select, so if I select this object, then you can see this is this rectangle, which gives me the sketch scale. If I select the next one, then you can see this is the project title. Um, etc. So each of these rectangles are in um, are in a layer. So each of these rectangles are in an independent layer. The main thing to consider here is that each of these layers must contain a rectangle which is closed, because that gives us a specific area in which we can include data. We can include text or an image or something else, but it has to be a closed um, rectangle. One of the important ones is here the drawings rectangle, which is this one, which tells me in which area I can add uh, any drawings that I'm generating in Grasshopper. So I know that I cannot go beyond these margins, but I cannot also go in this area, for example, because besides here, I have an area for my logo, I have an area for my project title, etc. So this uh, rectangle is also um, important to have. Other than that, all of this is actually uh, up to you how you want to add it. This is just an example where we have scale, title, uh, nodes, drawn by company, client, etc. But you can really add here whatever you want and you can set up this, uh, um, this template as you want. 
So the only three things that are very important to have always is to have your page in printing points units, as we already saw, to have closed rectangles for each of the areas where you want to include any text, and to have one specific rectangle in which you specify in which area our drawings can be positioned. The same we have for every single other template that we provide here. So we have here a for portrait, we have exactly the same. We have a rectangle, which is for um, the drawings in where we can include drawings. We have a rectangle for logo, a rectangle for project title, for scale, etc. Um, and if we go to the A3 layer, then we have exactly the same situation with exactly the same layers. So set up this as you wish, but have into consideration these three points. Page and printing point units, rectangles for your uh, text or any other data that you want to include that are closed and defined, and a final rectangle, which is where our drawing will be set, will be positioned. Now, how do we get this into Grasshopper? The first thing is that we need to export this in a DXF format. It could be also 3DM format, but a DXF format gives us um, these layers in a different way that we will explore later. So we can just um, select all of our curves, file, export selected, and export as DXF. I already did that, so we can go directly into Grasshopper and see how do I import these curves. So we go here into the export section. We have here this component, which is the import geometry component from ShapeDiver plugin. So you have ShapeDiver plugin, inputs, import geometry component. This component is able to import all of these uh, file types, but what we are going to import right now is just a DXF. So these, these, these cures that you see here are already in Grasshopper. So if I just hide what we have in, um, in our uh, Rhino viewport, we can see that we still see these cures because this is no longer related to this Rhino um, document. This is just coming from this file path, which is uh, basically where I have my DXF exported. So if I right click, select one existing file, here we have the DXF um, file that we ex just exported and this component will import these curves here. Now from these curves, we need to extract these layers that we established in our uh, Rhino document. To be able to do that, we can use the attribute system of the ShapeDiver plugin. So in the ShapeDiver attributes, we have the um, extract attributes component, which we have it here. This will take our imported curves and get any attribute that it has. These attributes can be layer, can be color, can be plot color, etc. We can also use the deconstruct attributes component to see all what these cubes contain. So if we check that into a panel, then we can see that we have each of these cubes contain an attribute of layer, color, plot, color, plot weight, and material. But for now, the only thing that we did is to put um, logic in terms of layer. We could also put a logic in terms of color, but uh, for now we will do it just in, in terms of layer. So to be able to access a specifically layer, we here use the access key component. It is also here in the attributes section, access key. And here we just need to put our attributes plus the key that in this case is layer and we get finally the value. So as you can see, when we export it to, um, to DXF, the DXF file gets our sub layers and puts them in this format. We had first our page size, so A4, a3, A2, etc. Then we had whether it is landscape or portrait, and finally the actual um, information that should be in each of these rectangles. If it's a margin, if it's client, company, etc. All of this divided by this dollar sign. So what we can do is, is use the native text split component, split these layers, and then we will get three uh, pieces of data here. Again, uh, page size, uh, page style or landscape portrait, and then finally uh, the actual um, information that we should add there. In this particular example uh, of this model, we have that uh, you can also select which page size do you want. If you want to export this as um, A3, as A4, if you want, you can include here as many as you want, as long as they are actually in your, um, in your templates, in the templates that you created. 
So in this case, we have that we want to include this in an A3 format. So the first thing that we need to do is just to do that filtering. So we take all of our layers, A4, A3, etc. We look for A3, and then that's how we just get the A3 pages. Additionally, we are going to get the templates type, so whether it is landscape or portrait. And finally, uh, just for this particular A3, the, whether it is margin, scale, sketch scale, project title, etc. So now we went from all our templates to just A3. But now we need to go from just A3 to either landscape or portrait. And this we're going to do automatically. So to be able to do this selection, we need to calculate the scale. Why? Because the scale will let us know in which of these pages, in landscape or in portrait, our object, our, um, in this case, bookcase, will, will uh, cover the majority of the page. So it will be more optimal. For that, we are using this cluster. This cluster contains a um, C-sharp script, which you can also find uh, in, down in the description. But basically, it just takes the page width and page um, height. This page width and page height is just the drawing rectangle. So remember, in our Rhino document, we create a rectangle in which we said, here is where you should position a drawing. So that's the page width and page height that we have, that we have here. Not the entire page, but just the section in which we want to draw our model. Then we need to tell it the real drawing width and real drawing height. So in this case, I'm calculating the scale of the second page. So that means that the real width and the real height will be the sum up of my total height plus the depth of the model of the bookcase. And on the other side will be the total width plus the depth as well. So here we have it. width plus depth and height plus depth. That gives us the actual, because we want to include these three drawings in the same page. That's why we need to add it all. Now that we have that, Finally, we add the extra width and extra height. What is this? It is these extra spaces that we have here. So, of course, we want to have our drawing scaled to a point in which it is added inside our page. But additionally, we want additional space to be able to have a little space here, a little space here, plus um, the space that we need to be able to offset our dimensions. So, in this case, for example, we are saying that we have a distance between drawings of 40, in this case it's 40 printing points, and an offset of 20 printing points um, for our dimensions. So we need 1 times 40, because we have 1 times 40 here, 1 times 40 here, and 3 times dimensions, because we have one offset here of our dimensions, plus another offset, because we need double to make sure that our measurement is not over the margin, and we need another dimension on the other side, even though it doesn't exist, because we don't want our drawing to be uh, against our margin. We need to have a little bit of space just to be able to have a, a, a nice composition. So, in one side, we have our dimensions in real size, in millimeters in this case, but on the other side, the page extra width and height is in printing points. What this C-sharp does is to loop to calculate how much we have to scale down our drawing to be able to fit it inside our page, then add this extra width and height, then it will check, okay, is our drawing is still inside our page after we add this or not? If it is not, then it will loop again to the next scale, loop again, loop again, until it is able to find a scale that is optimal to be able to fit everything in our page. Which scale is used? If you want a standard scale, so for example, 1 to 1, 1 to 100, 1 to 200, 1 to 20, you can add any that you want here, then you can set this to true, the standard scale to true. But you could, we could also set this to false, and then it will not consider any standard scale, and it will just try to add the biggest drawing possible um, inside my margins, inside my drawing section. In the outputs, we get then the scale how much we have to scale down our drawing, in this case 0 0.39 times or 0 0.25, and the standard scale. In this case is minus one because we have this set to false, but if we invert it again, then we can see that the standard scale is one to 10 and one to 13. So we can go back again. And um, 
to be able to automatically select the page that is uh, the most optimal, then we will sort our scales and we can in that way know that the, the most optimal uh, one in this case is going to be, uh, in this case, the portrait mode. That's because the portrait mode will give us uh, an, a scale of 0 0.28, whereas the other one gives us a scale of 0 0.21. So, 20, so basically the portrait mode, uh, the, the drawing will fill more the page. Here this is completely generic. This means that if you have thousands of templates, you can run, run them through this script and this will give us which page is the one that you should use to be able to fit your drawing in the best way possible. We could continue this logic so that, for example, this A3 and A2, uh, sorry, this A3 and A4 um, selection is also done automatically, but for this particular example, it's not necessary. But if you have some very um, drastic changes in dimensions, then this could be also good to do in, uh, to be able to know in which page is better to have uh, your, your model as well, not just uh, in landscape mode and portrait mode, but also whether it's better A3, A4, A2, or any other page size. Now we have selected our uh, landscape or portrait mode. So here we have the rectangle. We go to landscape mode. Um, again, we do the same. We filter everything out. So we also have here just the specific layer types for this specific A3 uh, portrait mode. And from here, we can now start to separate the different rectangles. So one rectangle is the uh, drawing area, one rectangle is the actual page. Next one is where my company goes, where the notes go, where the scale go. Um, and here, of course, everything else is here. So let's have a look first at the company. So the company, in this case, we are just adding a logo. We could add something else, but in this case, we are just adding a logo. How do we add a logo? First, we need to import it. To be able to import an image, it has to be in, uh, through this component, which is the import bitmap component, also in the ShapeDiver plugin, input section, import bitmap component. This component, if we right-click on it, we can see all of the formats that it supports. We're also using this file path to be able to test it locally. So we right-click, select one existing file, and in this case, we have this logo, and that's exactly what we get here. We go to the ShapeDiver Squid plugin. Here we have this component called the Quick Preview, and then we can see that uh, this is the ShapeDiver logo that we are doing here, but we could have any other logo if we want. Then uh, we do this, we use exactly the same um, cluster that we used here to be able to calculate. Um, how much is uh, how much we have to scale our um, bitmap down to be able to fit it inside our uh, company rectangle? So we know um, the we have the bitmap. We need to get the width and height of the bitmap, which is the drawing width and height. That is part of our shape diver plugin. Here we have images, bitmap properties, and that's what we come we put here. On the other side, we put uh, the page width and height. In this case, it's just this little little rectangle. And in that way, we end up with this rectangle, which is the one that gets scaled inside our company section. Finally, we use this component, which is uh, inside the Squid Shape Diver Edition, Instructions, Image Component, and this makes sure to draw our logo in our uh, PDF. Let's go to the next part, Title Blocks. So here we have all of these title blocks. And in this case, we have that the first title block is a sketch scale, the second is project title, date, drawn by, and client. Again, this could be whatever you want, but for this example, this is what we have. And inside this cluster, we have also some um, uh, squid shape diver edition uh, components. So we have the rectangles, we offset them a little bit inside just because we don't want the text to be exactly on the edge of the rectangle, but we want it to be a little bit inside with an offset. Then we have the text, uh, that is the title that we want to add in the top. And uh, we want to uh, say that the size of this text is seven, again, seven printing points. 
if we check uh, this component, this component is here in the Squid uh, plugin, draw and palette, and then here we have the font. You could also set the family um, of the uh, font. You could say whether it is bold, whether it is italic or underlined, and all of these give us a font, which goes inside this component, which is the text component, which is inside the instruction section text. And finally, we need to also give it uh, the paragraph component here in this section, travel palette, paragraph, which is what give us in this rectangle, where do I want to align my text to? So horizontally, do I want this text to be on the left of the rectangle, in the center of the rectangle, or on the right of the rectangle? By default, right now, we have it that is always on the left of the rectangle. And vertically, whether you want it on the top, on the center, or on the bottom. In this case, we have it on the top. So this is what we get here at the end. Uh, on the left and in the top, we get project title on the left and in the top, we get sketch scale, etc. So all of these texts are always on the left top of our every single rectangle. Additionally, here in this component, the text component, we could also give it uh, an outline and a color. So if we want this text not to be red, not to be black, but to be red or anything else, you can also do that if you want. In this case, we were going to leave it black. Now, we need the data. So we have the title, but we also need the data. Is it configurator? Is it uh, the project title? Is it the date, etc. So it's exactly the same concept. We have the same rectangles, um, but instead of putting our alignment to the um, top, we're going to put it to the bottom so that we get all of this text to the bottom. And also we make our, um, our font size bigger, in this case, uh, 10 units we have here. All the other thing is just building our strings. So here we're just using these uh, concatenate components to be able to create the project title that is the one that we use um, in this case, in this section. Uh, we use the C sharp to be able to, to automatically generate the date. And we also use this um, input, which comes from this component in the shape diver section inputs, direct text input component. This will allow the clients to be able to input the text, in this case, for example, their name, so that it gets reflected in the PDF. Um, that's the same that we're doing with extra notes. Those things are the things that appear here. So you can put any text that you want, any custom text that you want, you can add it to your PDF. You saw that in the demo that we did in the last video, that I put, for example, this is a test in the extra notes, and uh, my name. So this is information that I can type in the online configurator, in the cloud application, and that I can put it then back into um, PDF. Here, the next sections are pretty much exactly the same. We're just taking some text, in this case, the scale of each drawing, which we will review in the next videos, and using the same cluster to be able to generate the instructions that are needed to, to add this text into the PDF. And finally, we need the cure. So we need to actually draw every single one of these cures in our PDF. To be able to do that, we just need this draw component from the Shape Diver Squid plugin. Here in the instructions, we have draw. And this component um, takes curves as an input takes also, in this case, uh, a currency. That's just if you are sending it a curve, it will convert it into a polyline because these are just lines, then this is not relevant. Then outline, outline comes here from draw and palette, outline. The outline will give us how wide is our curves. So in this case, how wide is this? If it's gonna be wider than that or not. Um, and the color, which can be any color as well. In this case, we have it just black, but it could be any color. And that's it. That's how we create a template in Grasshopper. Uh, we started with our Rhino document where we have all of our curves divided into layers. Then we extracted those layers um, names through the ShipDiver plugin, the Extract Attributes Components. And in that way, we were able to generate logics like selecting automatically which template is the best for the drawing size that we have or uh, adding text into it, images, etc. The last thing to consider is that when you are in ShapeDiver, to be able to import the templates that we have or a logo that we have, we will get in ShapeDiver this option 
to uh, select a local file. So of course here in Grasshopper, we have this file path component, which allow us to also select an existing file in our local folders, but this is in your local folders, which we cannot access in ShipDiver. So we need to upload that into our servers. So this import geometry component gives you this um, section here where you can click here, select uh, your template. This, in this case, we have the DXF and that uh, will be saved as your default when you click here, save. So that will be stored in our servers. The same happens with the logo. So if we click here, so this component, the import bitmap component, give us um, also the option to import a file, in this case, an image file. And when we click save, that's now the default that will be used in our ShapeDiver uh, application. And that's all for today. Thanks for joining us. And now you have completed the second step to be able to generate technical drawings with Grasshopper. Now that we have our drawings, curves, and now that we have our templates, in the next tutorial, we will look at how to join these two together to finally get our PDF. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out the next section of our video tutorial series and to share this video with your colleagues and friends. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.